Okay, we've had a number of sessions where we have gone through different aspects of the model and I've interactively shown you the model as we've gone along, um, specifically uh, to examine the different policies and functions and most recently to take you through the uh, ways of um, modifying an existing policy or adding a new policy. I'm now actually going to put it all together and walk you through the entire model. Sometimes I'll just give examples of say an income list or a, a tax unit um, or in, indeed even a, a, a Ben Calc within a a policy. Sometimes I'll take you through a whole policy um, just to give a sense of the overall model. Okay, before I do anything I'm going to park the 2012 um, system. Remember we can move this any selected system to the uh, hidden systems box which I've done and then close that and that gives us simply the 2015 system which we can move across to fully um, uh, um, get, get, get a good view of, of, of the whole um, system. Before I start with the systems however can I just uh, remind you of the, the tabs that, 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 are, that, are, that are useful. Um, display uh, tab we don't use but I did mention conditional formatting um, I think in the last session when I talked about being able to highlight changes but that's really the main um, display parameter that uh, we, we sometimes use otherwise these are ways of looking at single policies showing the hidden systems boxes etc but usually we use the defaults. In terms of the country tools I've mentioned the add system, delete system. Um, I will remind you of uprating indices which is something else that we uh, use but and of course databases um, is another important part of the country tools which again for our particular data is not so interesting because the only database is the uh, HBS. Um, but that's uh, which of the country tools are commonly used. If we look at administration tools, the most important there, I think for us, is the variables administration tool. Um, the add country, delete country, import country, etc. are much less important. Um, but the variables, remember from the last session, is where you add a variable in Euromod format um, if uh, um, you need to introduce a new variable either because you've created a new variable within the um, underlying data set or because you've uh, um, introduced in a policy reform a new variable. Remember new variables have to be in the format of the um, uh, Euromed, Euromod format with, with the acronyms created, I'll, I'll open this so that we can be reminded of it, a acronyms created in the, in the correct way so that assets um, variables begin with A, benefit variables with B, um, tax variables with T etc etc, demographic with D, labour market with L. Here are the top level acronyms here, demographic D, labour market L, benefit pensions B or P, income Y, tax T, assets A, expenditure X, um, in-kind uh, uh, um, uh, beginning with K and system with S. So these, if you're introducing a new variable in your input data set as I say or within the model itself you have to make sure that it's in this list or you need to create it using 
these acronyms um, and you can create levels of acronyms using the acronym tab. Um, you can of course, and we have done within the model, introduce variables in the model that us by using the def var uh, function and I'll illustrate those when we go through the model. The def var, for example, we use extensively within TASMOD to introduce intermediate variables um, and we also use it for expenditure variables because it's a, a different way of introducing variables to the model um, and is particularly useful as I say for intermediate and expenditure variables but otherwise it's this variables um, uh, uh, um, administration tool is vital um, and the add-ons, these are yet not available for um, Southmod. There's special add-ons being developed for Southmod to enable um, straightforward calculations of both the uh, numbers of beneficiaries and amounts uh, relating to uh, different um, benefits and taxes, but also um, to allow us to calculate uh, poverty and inequality in straightforward and easy ways. Then the applications, I've told you that we use um, the Excel application often in order to check the outputs doing what it says. I mentioned the summary statistics as another thing that um, uh, um, the, the tool will be specifically uh, helpful for. And then help and information there's a help file um, and uh, a, a, a version number. A version just simply gives us information as to which version of the executable we're using. And the help uh, um, helps on understanding functions, parameters, etc. Though I have to say also with the TASMOD training there will be a training manual and that will specifically go into in more detail the uh, functions and parameters used within TASMOD. Okay, so let's press the country port tool and go back to going through the model itself. Again, uprate, remember this was when we did the session on um, uh, definitional policies, we talked about uprating. I showed you that within the country tool we create an uprating index that, in the case of Tanzania, is the overall CPI or various components of the CPI. Okay, and um, the CPI we've been using in TASMOD is the one that was recently um, updated with a base at December 2015. I'll close that. Um, but just to remind you, you declare the data set and then the default factor, which is the overall CPI. And then because we don't have any earnings factors, we use the overall uh, factor for um, uh, both YEM, employment income, and YSE, which is self-employment income. Um, okay. Now, I didn't go through the expenditure and the expenditure excise um, policies when I took people through the definitional policies, simply because it's slightly more complex. But I will briefly mention it now. So there's two, there's expenditure and expenditure excise. Expenditure is how we bring in the variables into TASMOD um, that are used specifically for calculation of VAT. And we wanted to bring in the variables in as a disaggregated a way as possible to enable all kinds of variations to VAT to be simulated um, in, in, in policy reforms, should that be uh, required. Um, and if I can just show you the general structure of the uh, expenditure um, underscore TZ policy, um, it, it, you first of all define 
the variables that you want to bring in. This is so as you don't need to use the variables tool that I mentioned before, there's a way of bringing them in and defining the variables as a separate file. And the reason that you don't use the variables tool is that there are 700 plus variables of expenditure items in TASMOD that we want to bring in. And it's really um, time consuming to bring them in through the traditional variables uh, 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 um, route. So if I can just show you the def bar, we list all of the variables. And these variables are constructed in the form extra expenditure and then the COICOP code. Um, and you can see rice, paddy, bread, flatbread, etc. They're all brought in. There's a zero um, uh, uh, um, in, in their initial, in, when they're initialized. And I think I'm right in thinking there were 700 plus. We can go right the way down and we will see how many there were brought in. And it's 781. Okay. I'll take it up and then compact it, but um, compress it. But you can see that we brought in 781 variables um, through this file. So that's your def var to initialize those variables. Then the def input gives you the path of the input file that you're bringing in because um, we bring in a special file with just expenditure variables. So it's that file is put in the same folder as the more general input uh, uh, um, data set. So it's in the um, TASMOD version 1.0 slash input folder. So we state that there. We then state the name of that file, which in this case is tz underscore 2012 underscore expenditure dot txt. And then the, uh, the, the merge variable, and it's merged at the level of ID person. That's because though expenditure is a household level expenditure, um, we in the preparation of the syntax have allocated that household spent expenditure to the head of household. And so in a, in a household, uh, there's only one entry um, of expenditure and that's alongside the head of household. And then that's brought in um, as um, that, that expenditure against the head of household, but other members of the household just have a zero against them. But you therefore want to merge the, uh, or you want um, TASMOD to merge in that data against the head of household. Next thing to do is to define an income list um, and a way of up, up, up rating that income list um, because um, it's quite important with expenditure items if we can, because given this data set is 2012, to uprate um, in as sophisticated a way as possible. And for um, TASMOD, we've taken the decision to divide the um, um, expenditure variables into food and non-food and uprate the food by the food CPI and the non-food by the non-food CPI. Um, we treat excise um, dutiable items separately and try to be a little more, bit more sophisticated with them. So the income list for the food items for convenience, we've copied all of them um, into this list, the whole 781, but we put a plus against the food items and against the non-food items, we've put a not applicable. The, the reason we've done it this way is because it's relatively easy to cut and paste within the model. So we can actually cut and paste uh, all of the um, uh, uh, variables, expenditure variables, bus, both food and non-food, and then put a plus against the ones that should be added together to form the food income list, and are not applicable against all of the items that are in the non-food income list. In this particular, in this particular case, so that's the food items. Okay. Then if we look at the next income list, exactly the same, but the where we've got a plus is now not applicable. And where we've got um, 
uh, a, 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 a not applicable is now a plus. So let's now collapse that. So, so, so basically we've, we've defined two income lists, uh, food expenditure variables and non-food expenditure variables. And those two income lists then get um, uprated, not under the uprate policy, but separately uprated. And here we are. Um, this is how we uprate. The first income list, you'll remember the food, we gave the name of uh, eel underscore exp underscore uprate zero one. And the other one we gave uprate zero two. But in order to uprate, we um, use the eel var op um, function. And eel var op is, it, it, it means that it, uh, the function performs a mathematical operation on an income list. So the income list in question is the uprate 01, i.e. the food. So that's the income list to be operated on. The operand, um, this is the um, uh, uh, um, uprating index. Um, so we want to take the income list uprate 01 and we want to do something to it involving the uprating index for food. And what we want to do is, is use the operation multiply. So MUL multiply. We want to multiply the um, food income list by the CPI for food. Okay. And then the second one is to do the same with the non-food, which is O2, and again multiply. And that indexes our expenditure. OK, the excise duty is very similar. We define the variables for the excise duty in the same way. The only thing that's different with the excise dutiful items is that for some of the excise duties, mainly actually, they're actually calculated on quantities. So we need a quantity variable um, brought in. So we define some Q variables. So Q021111. Zero, zero, which is the spirits, um, is brought in um, as a quantity. So that's row 3.1.1 here um, in litres. We also have the expenditure brought in um, here, if I'm not mistaken, as X021100. So again, we're using the COICOP codes for spirits and indeed for the other items, to bring them in in this nuanced way. Again, um, sorry to carry on with that, collapse there. We define the input. It's a different file, but it's in the same path. Again, merged in the same way. We define the income list. This time, because we're only uprating the expenditure, we're not uprating the quantities. We produce income lists for um, the um, spirits and alcohol as one, the tobacco products as another, and the fuel expenditure as another. So we've got three income lists that we're going to operate on, um, and we operate on them to uprate them in using a CPI for alcohol for the alcoholic uh, beverages income list, um, tobacco for the tobacco um, income list, and fuel for the fuel ones. Now they're really quite approximate, these um, uh, uh, um, particular uprating factors, because the CPI isn't that nuanced, but we have done the best we can, I think, um, given the a breakdown of the CPI provided by the Statistics Bureau. So I'll collapse that uh, whole policy. That takes us down to income lists um, more generally. You, I began to introduce income lists anyway, 
um, because they were in the in, in the policy above. But there's a an income list a definitional uh, policy. I talked about these in some detail and showed you some of these when we uh, looked in session two um, specifically at the definitional policies. So there's the uh, just show an income list. Um, for um, other income other than YEM for um, for the income tax policy. So it, the other income list contains other income, income from property, income from land and agricultural income. Similarly, there's an original income which uh, contains income from employment, other income, income from property, income from land, uh, income from self-employment, agricultural income and includes even income from private transfers which aren't included in the income list for tax because they're not taxable. Okay so that gives you a flavour of income lists. I, I took you through some of the others I know when we when we, we did the income list uh, uh, um, definitional policy but the, 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 the one other I'd like to signal sing, single out is the income list um, for uh, standard rated VAT items because this is again rather like the income list before of all the expenditure items um, on which VAT is likely to be appropriate but we want the standard VAT items so in this we make not applicable um, those items of food for example which are uh, zero rated for VAT which is things like rice and paddy but include ones that aren't. So basically the Tanzanian um, policy as you, as you know is that in a sense the raw materials, the food raw materials are zero rated but the derived processed food tends to be uh, standard rated. Okay. So that's the income lists. That takes us to the tax unit definitions. Again I explained um, when we did tax units that there are really only three tax units that are applied here. There's a household um, which has a, 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 um, a, a dependent child definition of um, uh, um, less than or equal 17 and greater than or equal to zero. But the, all members of the household belong to the household unit. Um, the family isn't actually, it's a subgroup of, of um, household but not used. Uh, the others that are used are individual and uh, couple. Okay, so we'd switch off the family because it isn't used. Okay, constant definition, well we've used this considerably in, in the exercises as well. Um, a lot of the constants are put into the constant definition. These are the uh, items like the monthly amounts of um, uh, for um, different um, uh, variable conditional cash transfer beneficiaries and the caps um, and so forth, which we'll go through a bit when we look at those policies. Um, but and, and, and there's also the excise duty rates and, 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 and VAT rate, etc. What we haven't done, and partly um, uh, because uh, we wanted to leave um, some work in for these exercises, um, but partly because um, it hasn't just proved enough time to do it all, is put everything into constants that could be put into constants and one of the things as you go through this you'll see that there are other things that could have been put into constants that we, we haven't yet done and indeed the exercises um, for the um, last um, in the last presentation involved putting into constants um, uh, uh, um, some of the parameters that aren't currently in constants. Okay, so it's not it's not obligation to use the constant definition, it's just easier really. Okay, let me then take you through these other two policies, and there's a pair of them really. I'll open them both out and then we can look at them. These are the policies 
that relate to um, employees in the formal sector um, and it's the um, National Health Insurance Fund and it's basically both the employee and the employer contribution. Both are at 3%. It's mandatory for the public sector. Um, it's not mandatory for all sectors, but it's common in the formal sector generally. Um, so we have implemented it um, for both employee and employer. For people who have employment income, that is they have YEM that's greater than zero, and the LFO equals one. LFO is a, a labour market variable, which means labour formal. So, and uh, labour formal equals one if the occupations uh, are in certain groupings, like the employer is uh, public sector or the employer is government. Um, sorry, that's the same thing. Uh, government and, and, and public sector, but also uh, private industry and so forth. So formal sector um, employees are given a, f a flag of one in the original data set. So we can make the condition that YEM is greater than naught and LFO equals one for being um, simulating this particular um, contribution. And this is simulated at 3% for both employer and employee, so a total of 6%. Um, and the employee one is goes into the variable TSCEEHL, and the um, employer one goes into TSCERHL. And this is actually simulated quite well within the model, um, it's a slightly uh, greater amount, I think, simulated than actually um, is collected, but it's, it's pretty good. Okay, that takes us into the taxes, or at least the direct taxes. The indirect taxes are at the bottom here, but the direct taxes are really two groups, or two. There's the uh, presumptive income tax, which is a turnover tax, which, as I said, when we went through um, this particular policy, um, I think in in, um, in 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 the second session, or maybe no, sorry, the third session, um, is is a turnover tax for people who are really traders, mainly in the informal sector, with a turnover of less than twenty million. Uh, Tanzanian shillings a year um, who aren't in employment, in formal employment, um, and don't have any YEM, or not in agriculture, don't have any YAG, um, and don't keep accounts. Um, it's it's, it, it, it's uh, payable at a lower rate than income tax because it's paid on turnover. So let's just have a look at it. The eligibility condition is that they have to have a turnover of greater than zero and that the turnover is less than the presumptive upper limit, which I think I mentioned was 20 million, um, and they don't have any formal employment income, and they uh, don't have any agricultural income. Look, when you actually hover, by the way, on the uh, constant, it actually spells out what the constant is, and it, as you can see in the, in, 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 in the small box there, it's, uh, it tells you it's 20 million, so I was right. Then you, that um, amount of turnover in those circumstances, so using a tax base of YTN, but only if you pass the eligibility test, you move on to the, uh, the, 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 sh the calculation schedule where you're actually then taxed, um, uh, your total turnover is taxed um, depending on which bands it, it falls into, so um, up to four million and one, you you don't pay any turnover tax, and then 
um, up to seven and a half million it's at three percent between seven and a half million and eleven and a half million it's three point seven five percent eleven and a half to sixteen four point five percent and then between sixteen and twenty it's five point two five and then the output variable is the turnover tax I think that should be pretty clear Income tax a bit more complicated, a bit more complicated because there's people on PAYE um, and there's also people from self-employment and indeed from uh, agriculture and who have other income who um, are also considered in this policy. So first of all, there are some intermediate variables we calculate and they're um, defined um, as using the DEFVAR function as I underscore PAYE and I underscore accounts. And you'll be familiar now with the way that they are defined. So it's PAYE income, um, um, EM, that is for those in the formal sector actually, and then self-employed income accounts cases, i.e. not the people who are captured in the turnover tax. So that's again why that TIN policy has to be after the turnover tax. And then there's a couple of Ben Calcs, an Arathop and a Shed Calc, um, which comprise the policy. So the first um, Ben Calc is just to capture the YEM of those people who are in the formal sector. So the condition is that they're in the formal sector, LFO equals 1. The... Uh, what is captured is eel taxably. Now, eel taxably, I will just show you, it is actually just yem minus the uh, NHI contribution. So let me just find it. Here it is. Okay, so it's yem minus, so that's plus adding yem but minusing the NHIF employee contribution because tax is only payable on the net um, uh, employment income after deduction of NHIF. Um, also deducted is, is pension contributions but we haven't yet modelled pension contributions. When they are that will be added into that income list. So let's go now back to um, the Ben Calc. So I underscore PAYE is IL underscore taxably if the person's in the formal sector. So in other words, it's YEM minus the NHIF contribution. Okay? So bear that in mind. That's one source of income. The other is if someone is in self-employment um, or um, and they're um, Either their turnover is higher than the upper limit of presumptive tax or they have YEM and the YSE is greater than naught, or they have YAG, i.e. agricultural income, and the YSE is greater than naught. Because remember, for presumptive tax, not only do you have to have your um, uh, turnover less than the upper limit, you also have not to be in either um, employment or agriculture. So this captures the people who have self-employment income um, who are um, either over the turnover limit or they have YEM or they have YAG. YSE is different than turnover. YSE within the data set has been calculated as net profit. Okay, And these people one refers to as accounts cases. So they are um, that's the the, the uh, eligibility condition. That's the amount that's brought in YSE. It has to have a lower limit of zero, and the reason that that's the case is because the way that the HBS asks about the data is that there are some people whose um, cost of production, if I can put it that way, exceed the income that they've brought in, so they have a negative. Um, uh, profit and in those cases they're just zeroed otherwise they can complicate the, um, the the tax calculation in a way that's not necessarily 
reflective of their actual profits over a year. And that's simply because um, the costs of production are only asked for over the last one month and it could just have been an expensive month. That's something we're hoping that uh, HPS will address in future versions. Okay, so we've got I underscore PAYE and I underscore accounts as two output variables, one reflecting um, PAYE income, the other reflecting accounts income. But of course we also have um, um, other income, like the income from land and so forth. That's contained in the income list, you'll remember, IL underscore taxably too. So if we add up using a simple calculator, I underscore PAYE plus I underscore accounts plus IL underscore taxably too, we get the total tax base. Um, which is in the uh, output variable TTB underscore S. And that is then what enters into the um, shed calc, where that tax is then taxed um, uh, using the thresholds indicated here and the rates indicated. So with the first um, uh, annual, uh, um, now I can have a quite calculate the numbers of zeros on these but I think the first um, two million um, of income at a zero rate of tax and then going up um, to a maximum of 30% tax okay and then the output variable is tin underscore s okay I'm going to close all those up now so that's the income tax the next thing to talk about is the productive social safety net benefits. Um, first of all, the fixed basic cash transfer, which is fairly straightforward, or is in the way that we've implemented it. Now, the uh, TASAF implement the um, um, PSSN benefits in quite a complex way which involves a proxy means test um, is worth saying here and it's all elaborated in the country report which I encourage you to read but basically the proxy means test aspect of the uh, um, calculation uh, uses is derived from the HBS itself by um, looking at the uh, food poverty uh, cases those households below the food poverty line in the HBS and then constructing a regression um, which looks at a, a combination of, of, of assets and attributes if I can put them that way which predict a household to be in food poverty we don't need to do that because we have the HBS and we have the food poverty line so we're able to categorically um, say whether a particular household is below the food poverty line or not. We don't have to speculate or use a proxy means test to achieve it because we have, if you want, a dependent variable um, uh, which was used in order to uh, construct the proxy means test in the first place. What we don't have is the series of community level um, screenings that are employed by TASAF before um, a household is awarded um, either the basic cash transfer or the variable conditional cash transfer. Um, so we can only implement the rule-based part of this. Okay, so let's let me show you how that's done. First of all, we um, have um, a, 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 um, an intermediate variable which we call BSA underscore individual, which is the individual BSA amount. The next thing we do is that we have a two-level Ben Calc. You remember when I talked about Ben Calcs, I talked about them as being possibly quite complex. So I introduced a, sing a simple one-level one with a comp con and a comp per tax unit, um, which is that's the eligibility condition, that's the uh, um, amount payable. Um, but this one has got two conditions. Um, which um, 
ends up with an output variable of the amount payable at individual level um, um, inserted into this temporary variable or intermediate variable i underscore bsa underscore individual. So the first condition is, as I said, food poverty equals one. That means that the household is in food poverty. Um, and actually that food poverty indicator is given to each indicate sorry, each individual in the household. So everyone who is in a food poor household will have a one against their uh, DFP um, a variable. So DFP equals one and the age is greater than or equal to naught and less than or equal to seventeen. So the infants and children are captured and allocated the uh, this this here, which is two thousand, you can just see in the little box two thousand um, uh, um, a month um, at the individual level. And then the second condition is for those greater than um, eighteen, i.e., the adults, and they're given five thousand a month. And then the result is put into the intermediate variable. Okay. Um, and then the amounts allocated to the different individuals are then added up and allocated at the household level. Um, so here we have. Um, we, we bring in the condition that the I underscore BSA underscore individual is greater than naught, so they've got to have um, something allocated at, 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 the, at, at this level. Um, and the amount brought in is this for each individual level, but it's calculated at household level, and they're added up, This what this... Um, function effectively does is adds up all the individuals who, are, who have been awarded I underscore BSA underscore individual and and assigns them to the head of household using that variable because the tax unit is household here. I hope that's clear. Okay, so that's the um, fixed basic cash transfer. Then I think we need to move on to the more complex um, uh, a, a variable uh, uh, um, conditional cash transfer. Before we don't go any further, there is a number of um, different um, intermediate variables declared here, defined at the beginning. They're all I underscore something. And it's first of all the I, BSA, HH with CH, is the households in receipt of BSA and containing one or more children is the first one. Children under seven are assigned their BSA amount. Um, there is a cap for the children under seven. Seven to 13 are assigned their BSA amount, but there's a cap um, and uh, uh, for the seven to 13s and finally the 14 to 17s. So, this will be clear when we look at the eligibility conditions relating to children. The, I should say the um, this this BCHOT, the variable conditional cash transfer, is an addition to the BSA, but only where there are children. So it's specifically for children. So BSA underscore S has got to be greater than zero, and the number of dependent children in tax unit have got to be greater than zero. And the output variable becomes... Um, in a sense, a flag, which is that the, um, the the household is in receipt of BSA and contains one or more child, children. Okay. And then there's a Ben calc um, whereby um, the first of all the test is are you um, one of these, i.e. a household in receipt of BSA containing one or more children. If yes, and you're, you've got your age is greater than zero, and your age is less than or equal to six, you get the amount 4,000, and that goes into the 
uh, a temporary variable for children under seven to be assigned their variable cash transfer amount. I suppose strictly we should have called this the variable cash transfer amount here and not BSA in this particular policy. And that's just a, a matter of the comments being not as accurate as they could be. But there's a cap. So you, you, any, any at household level, there can be uh, no more than um, 4,000 paid out. So basically, you can only get this amount as a household for one child under six. If you've got more than one child under six, it's capped at 4,000. So we bring in the fact that there's um, an output variable for children under seven assigned their amount, but then the um, uh, upper limit is the cap, which is for the household. So you add up them all in the household, but you cap it at 4,000. And as the, as it's, as the individual ch child under seven is awarded 4,000, that means that only one child under seven is included in the calculation at household level. It's a bit different for the if I can just expose the net, close up those two, but expose the children who are greater than or equal to seven and less than or equal to thirteen, because here they become awarded um, one thousand, but the cap is four thousand. So you can have four children, up to four children, um, uh, seven to thirteen. Um, before you're capped, and you're then capped at 4,000. Ditto the last... Sorry, not the last at all. Um, let me just close them up, see where I've got to. I think we're at the 14 to 17, yeah, the last. OK, I'll open those two up. Here with 14 to 17, the amount is 2,000 and the cap is 6,000. So you can have three, up to three children, aged greater than or equal to 14 and less than or equal to 17. And then finally, the Ben Calc adds up um, all of the um, uh, 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 um, amount, which is the capped amount. Um, and allocates it to the head of household. Right, but also you'll remember from the earlier um, presentations and indeed the exercises that you can't have as a household more than 19,000 a month of both the basic conditional tra transfer and the variable conditional cash transfer. So. Here we have this BSA B chop one that we worked on earlier, where the con condition is uh, eligibility condition is you've got to have either BSA or B shot. In fact, if if you've got BSA, um, sorry, if you've got B shot, you will have BSA, but you could have BSA without B shot. But um, the total amount at household level, which is at the tax unit level is the BSA plus the BCHOT, and if that's greater than 19,000, it's capped at 19,000. And whatever it is, is output to BSA double zero underscore S, as we talked about earlier. Okay, the final benefit um, is the eligibility for public works. Um, for the eligibility for public works, um, what I have, um, I've shown you this earlier as, a, as an example of something with just an elige without an arathop, because we all we generate is a flag as to whether someone's eligible. And basically, if you've got um, your fixed basic cash transfer, then the head of the tax unit is eligible. And this eligibility flag goes into BUN underscore S. And now, for this level of the um, training, I'm not going to go into indirect taxes. They are actually much more complex 
and though I've talked about how you import the variables for them, I'm not at this stage going to go into um, the indirect taxes. Um, we can do that as kind of more advanced training, I think. I did actually talk about the output though, and we have outputted almost all the variables, both from the input data set and the simulated data set, because we have outputted all these variable groups and we've also outputted income list groups. What we haven't done deliberately is output the expenditure variables um, simply because there are 781 of them, as you know, um, and that would cause a havoc um, in the output file. It would make a very big output file and would obscure uh, things. Um, but uh, we have, of course, output, though, though you, you, we haven't gone through it, the amount of excise duty and the amount of um, uh, VAT and, of course, the income list, which is the composite of all of the expenditure, but not the individual items. OK, uh, now collapse everything by the collapse all policies. And I think um, that's the end of this. Thank you.